Joining us now with his reflections, senior political analyst Britt Hume. Uh, Britt, that was a moving, moving ceremony. You know, it's remarkable that a service could be that long, and yet I never flagged. No, it didn't feel long. And of course, you know, it's an splendid uh, church. That I have, not to talk about myself too much, but I have a, a lot of experience with this place. I went to school on these grounds, and I spent many hours in that cathedral. In fact, my high school graduation was in there, and I remember running out in great joy that I made it to the <laughs> other right out here where you just saw the president's uh, hearse move away. And, you know, the combination that they can bring uh, of music mm. and sights, um, and it was so long and yet so powerful. And what I, what I think is important about it is that for a man who had one term, he had a very consequential presidency, as was remarked. And I felt when I was covering him at the time that people didn't fully understand what he was able to achieve, in part because a lot of what he undertook went well. And, and in a way, it was made to look easy. It wasn't. And his skill in handling the collapse of, of, of the Soviet Union, the reunification of, of Germany, and the opening up of Europe, and then later, of course, in the, in the first Gulf War, and there were a number of other events as well on the, on the world stage, um, I think we're finally seeing them more clearly now, perhaps, than we ever have. You know, Prime Minister Mulroney talked about that and how Helmut Kohl, then the Chancellor of Germany, said that that unification, reunification, could not have happened without George H.W. Bush. It, it was interesting to me at the time when he, the, he was very intent on that as president from the moment the, the opportunity be, became clear there was an opportunity for this. And he was very concerned about it and concerned about it going seamlessly, which was not guaranteed, Brett and Martha. It really wasn't. I mean, anything could have happened there when that wall came down. And when, you know, and when empires fall, uh, it often ends in bloodshed. And this didn't. A remarkable moment in human history. You, know, you heard what Prime Minister Mulroney said, you know, that it was the most consequential event of the 20th century. And the 20th century was full of contravention, contra uh, uh, major consequential events. So I was pleased to see that, and I was very moved by the service, uh, by the music, and by the references to his faith, which were a part of his life that was not exactly hidden, but he wasn't front and center about it the way I think a lot of people, including he, had wished it would be. And I referenced that on the intro and, and talked about our discussion about how he didn't really talk about it a lot. No, he didn't. But it was a big part of his life. It was, and I think, you know, he was, I, 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 you may remember, uh, Brett, some years ago, I, I kicked up a big controversy when I said in the midst of Tiger Woods' personal problems that it would have been a great thing for him and maybe even a great thing for the world if he had, if he had uh, come to Christ. And, oh, all hell literally broke loose. <laughs> yeah. And I got a lovely note from President Bush saying, you know, he was proud of me for saying it and right on, it was a great message and so on. It, um, I, mean, I wasn't worried about the reaction, but it was nice to hear from him about that and a sign, I think, of, of how he thought of all that. You know, it's so important as a nation that we go through this kind of ceremony, that we remember this life, and it's always fascinating to me when you see the gathering of American presidents as we did today. Britt, you've covered many of them who were there in the church today. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's a, you know, this is a real moment. I mean, there are a few moments when the living presidents are gathered in one place, together with this distinguished assemblage of other people who have served in government and with him, not to mention this vast and almost unbelievably large array of friends who were there. But what I'm kind of hoping out of this will come, that they, it will generate some interest among the young people of this country who weren't alive when these events happened and who may not fully understand, you know, what the fall of communism meant and, 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 and what a masterful, do what a major role the United States played in it and what a masterful job this one particular president did in bringing it about in a peaceful way. And, you know, it's a, it's a teachable moment, I think, I hope. You know, the sermon, the eulogies focused on unity. And to watch that front row of President Trump President Obama, you didn't see the shot. But no, I was, could actually. Actually, did you see were, it? Were, the remarkable thing was, it's a huge church, as you know, guys. But there were there were TV screens all over the place. Oh, I didn't we, know that. We okay. saw what you saw as well as what we could see from way in the back. So you saw the at the one point a little, the, yes, yeah, yeah. a little icy at the beginning, yeah. perhaps. Um, but as they were sitting next to each other, I was struck by listening to those eulogists really focus on the bringing it together and whether that translates in a very tough political environment now. Well, it's, 
maybe maybe it will for a time. That's something to hope for. And I, I would also say that what was remarkable about President Bush is that at this stage now, and not just because he's just died, but he became a non, an un, non-controversial president, a former president. And the admiration for his personal qualities, uh, I think, was felt by all. I mean, you know, you heard it from President Obama and his comments about him, and you heard it, and you heard it from Joe Biden and others. Um, that's important. It's important for for the people of this country to see that, and uh, it makes you hope that maybe it can continue for a while. Yeah, um, Mulroney spoke a little bit about the importance of being a gentleman on the world stage right. and leadership which, you know, may have been sort of the only moment where you felt kind of the presence of the controversy of the current president a little bit in some of these statements. It was something that I think they assiduously wanted to, to avoid, and it wasn't over the top at all, right. but it couldn't, you couldn't sort of help well, but think about and, the current moment in really that regard. And you couldn't really speak truthfully about uh, George H.W. Bush without remarking on the fact that he was, among many other things, he was an extraordinary gentleman. Yes. I mean, he was that, and the old-fashioned style uh, represented by all we heard in this service today. Look at these people lined up, Brett. I mean, it's, it's amazing. That obviously going past the World War II memorial um, and in tribute to his time as a World War II veteran. There you see the Lincoln Memorial in the background. You know, you love Twitter, Brett. Um, Ari Fleischer tweeted out, every VP since 1977 is at President Bush's funeral except one. Mondale, Quayle, Gore, Cheney, Biden, and Pence are there. The only one missing is President Reagan's, George H. W. Bush. Bush right? Yeah. Sad moment for them. Uh, you know, I, 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 I really thought, thought as I was listening to, to George W. Bush, deliver that final uh, eulogy, appreciation, that, that that family had been about as well prepared for a loss of one so loved as it could be. But even in the end, there it was too much. And, I did and, see. President Bush, you, Jimmy Baker. Jim Baker was dissolved. Was he? he? Was. Oh yeah, and and he, yeah. yeah, and he, you know, he. They really. He, that was a very interesting relationship between uh, between H. W. Bush and Baker because Baker is a very smart, able guy on his own. He served Reagan as chief of staff. Before that, he was President Bush's campaign manager in 1980. Their friendship dates back forever in Texas, and then he served as Secretary of State under Bush, and they were dear friends. But it's, on some level, they're competitors. Um, and they used to, I used to, they used to dig at each other, you know, and uh, just in a good-humored way. But there was a certain level of competition there. All that, of course, uh, aside now, in, in this moment, they, that was a long-time friendship uh, between two extraordinary men. You know, and when we look back on this period, you look at giants of our time. You know, public servants who were truly outstanding. Um, Baker certainly among them, along Absolutely. with along with the president he served. And we're looking live at. Uh... Joint Base Andrews, that's uh, former administration officials lined up to say goodbye to the 41st president for the last time. Um, and he will fly then to Houston, where there'll be another ceremony. Shepard Smith will uh, take over that coverage tomorrow from Houston. Britt, I guess final thoughts here. Um, having been in here, having covered uh, the Bushes, having known the Bushes, um, your final thoughts on this day? Well, being in the church was was remarkable in the sense that you sense the vastness of the array of friends he made and people he served with. I mean, it was a huge crowd. I saw people I hadn't seen in 38 years since the, the, his first campaign for president in 1980, which ended in the primary season when he lost to Ronald Reagan. And, you know, it's true that a politician who becomes president makes a lot of friends and has to, needs them. You know, you need, a, you need, your, you need your people to be behind you. But I think in his particular case, it was especially so because he was a master, as you may have heard me say, Brett, of the small gesture. And he, and he did so many things for so many people. You heard the story about him tearing up in the presence of, of a child sick with leukemia in much the way his, his young daughter had been when, before she died. And, you know, that was how he was. He, he touched you in a certain way. And it wasn't just so you could roam, run home and say, hey, I met, you know, President Bush or, 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 you know, Ambassador Bush as he was for a long time. No, it was something else about him. It was a personal touch about it that I think people felt very deeply, and that's why there were so many of them there today and why this service was so reflective of the man he was. Those Good. personal touches had a sincerity and an authenticity to exactly, them. Exactly, Martha. And, and that's what makes them, I think, so unique and him so unique. Exactly so. Brett, thank, thank you so you, much. Pleasure, Brett. Wonderful Pleasure, to Martha. have you.